Hey guys, this is Brian over at Obedia, and today to continue uh, my showcase of Cakewalk's new Sonar X1 digital audio workstation, I'm going to show you guys Pro Channel. Pro Channel is only available firstly in X1 Producer. If you have either of the versions that come below that, you're not going to have access to Pro Channel. Um, that said, Pro Channel is Cakewalk's move to uh, incorporate a lot of world class recording gear into one channel strip in uh, Sonar and gives you access to a sound uh, of a lot of gear that usually is a lot is very expensive and harder to get all in uh, in software so I think they've done a really good uh, thing here by incorporating Pro Channel and uh, so let's take a look at Pro Channel it's accessed through the inspector which typically is going to float on the left hand side of your screen but I've decided to float the inspector out here so that I can have quick access to things and I can put it on my second monitor and things like that now Pro Channel is accessed by clicking on the Pro Channel tab here on the top of the inspector and that'll show you Pro Channel immediately Pro Channel will open up and you're gonna notice that it has a lot of different things going on uh, it has a compressor it's got an equalizer and down at the bottom it's got tube saturation and these are all things that usually you would have to instantiate a lot of different plugins in order to get and so the whole idea here is to again uh, as is the move with X1 to consolidate a lot of these things into one uh, very easy to use channel strip so if we take a look at the compressor you're going to notice that at the top it's got two different modes it has the 76 and it has the 4k mode 76 is much more simplified and the 4k is a little more modern a little more uh, complex and allows you to get a little more in depth with the compression that you're doing on your track so in order to enable the compressor all we've got to do is hit the power button and now the compressor is going to be enabled and we can start our playback I'm gonna loop my playback here and I'll just show you a little bit of what we can do with the compressor and uh, what we're gonna do is we'll kick it into infinity mode uh, here on the ratio and we'll just kinda of listen to the sound of that a little bit and I'll show you how if we go from infinity back a little bit we're going to have um, more of a tolerable sound on these drums but we're gonna have a good kind of uh, pumping good compressed sound on them so we can hear with that ratio cranked up all the way there that it's just got it's got too much going on the sound is overbearing and so we're gonna bring that up again and we're gonna roll the ratio back So I like the sound of the 12 there on the ratio. I think that that sounds really good for these drums. And uh, again, you know, this is all up to your ear and how you like to mix things. But you'll be able to hear the difference very quickly. And uh, and you'll notice, I think, the sound that the compressor adds. Uh, it really does add a lot of character. Now, if we go into 4K mode again, we have a lot more options here. And uh, you'll notice that this has makeup controls and various things like that. And so let's enable this and just play back and just see what the audio sounds like. So I think I've got a pretty good sound going there by bringing the makeup um, a little bit high, but I've cut the threshold back a little bit, and I've got my ratio fairly nominal, and you know it's not over, it's not pushed too high. If I were to push this much higher, the drum really does sound just way too squashed and would not be very useful unless that was the effect that I was going for, um, and so this is just kind of a quick mix using the drums and using the compressor and pro channel you've also got the option to sidechain enable it here which is also really cool because sidechain compression is something that is that is so common in most music production that's really nice to have quick and easy access to it here from the compressor so now let's move down to the equalizer and the eq is a fairly standard affair it's something that we're, we're used to seeing in an EQ uh, it has your normal controls between lows and low mid mids and highs and things like that uh, we enable it of course by just hitting the power button and we can start to make changes to the EQ by simply clicking and changing the curves 
right here in in the uh, graphical representation window we can also of course use the knobs and dials to get a little more in depth and by clicking on the buttons underneath the graphical representation right here we can enable or disable the high pad the high frequencies low frequencies things like that so let's move down to the equalizer and the equalizer of course is enabled by pressing the power button and here in the filter curve window we're going to see that we have three different options we've got pure we've got vintage and we have modern. Pure is going to be as unaffected a sound as can be achieved uh, using digital audio principles. Vintage and modern are both going to add characteristics that you would find in most vintage or modern uh, mixing consoles and their equalizers and this has to do with the electronics they existed in those equalizers and therefore have uh, Cakewalk has worked to emulate uh, using these algorithms in the equalizer. So this gives you access to a couple of different sounds as you're moving along in your mix. As you move down, you'll notice that you've got uh, your buttons to enable or disable your different frequencies, low, low, mid, mids, and highs. You've got your frequency control knobs here, your Q, your level controls. You'll also notice that you have low shelf and high shelf enable. As we move down, we have uh, high pass enable and low pass enable. We've also got frequency and slope controls for each of those. Those can be really useful depending on what it is that you're mixing. You might want to end up using a low pass if you're mixing some drums, a high pass if you're mixing some vocals, various things like that. You'll also notice that you have this gloss button and the gloss button, the whole point of it is to add uh, a little bit of a sheen to the overall mix and you can hear it depending on what it is that you're working with and uh, hence the name gloss adding sheen to your overall audio sound so again I'm gonna go ahead and play these drums back and I'll just make some changes on the EQ and show you guys how the sound is affected uh, when I make these changes So you'll notice that as I change between vintage and modern, my filter curves are going to change. And that's because vintage and modern gear has different uh, filter curves that it is able to do just depending again on the electronics that were used at the time uh, when that gear was built. So you know you do notice a difference in the sound right here as you shift around between vintage and modern and I make some changes to the overall curves that I'm using and things like that. Let's also check out the gloss button. So the gloss button is adding a little bit of uh, high overtones there and gives kind of a bit more of an open sound to the overall mix and the EQ. So again, you would want to spend some time just uh, getting to know the EQ in Pro Channel, but this again gives you really quick access to this EQ and allows you to use, of course, these different, uh, these different features such as vintage and modern and the filter curves that you can get as a result from them to really give your sound uh, a, a different character as you move along in your mix. Finally, let's have a look at uh, the tube saturation module down here on the bottom of Pro Channel. Tube saturation's uh, entire function is to add a little bit of drive to your overall sound and kind of uh, give a little bit of a cranking sound, a little bit of distortion, and uh, usually add some warmth to the overall sound. Now we can change the saturation type uh, using the saturation type button right here. We can move between uh, 0 and 100. Of course we enable the tube saturation by turning it on. And the only way that you're really going to hear tube saturation of course is to play it back and change the uh, settings of it. So let's start playing it and we're going to pay attention to the drive knob as we turn it up. So you'll notice that this is adding a little bit of warmth and definitely a little bit of distortion and drive to the overall sound of the drums. And this is going to depend on your source audio and what it is that you are um, attempting to mix using Pro Channel and the tube saturation. This is just kind of a nice way to add, again, a little bit of warmth uh, to the overall mix that you're working with. Finally, if we take a look down here on the bottom uh, and we're going to notice the routing section. 
we can use the routing section to change which modules feed into which in order and this will therefore add a little bit of different character to the audio as we change the routing. So this way depending on what we have feeding into what we get kind of a different effect and you're going to notice this more as you go along and change your mix. Uh, you'll notice that the sound will be very different depending on if you, you have everything being fed into the compressor or if you have everything being fed finally out of the equalizer and various things like that. So you'll want to spend some time experimenting and getting to know the sound and how you can apply it to your own personal sound and your mixing technique. These are some of the cool features of Pro Channel. Again, you would want to, no matter what, spend some time getting to know it and mix with it and see how it can affect your audio. But uh, I do think that you'll find that it very quickly can get incorporated into your workflow and can really make it so that you're not instantiating as many plugins as you typically do. It's nice to have quick access to a compressor and an EQ and a little bit of tube saturation and and then of course the various controls that come with each of these modules that usually you would have to instantiate at least a couple or three plugins in order to get these sounds and so it's nice to have quick access to it just right here in your channel strip and, and to mix very quickly. I hope this is useful to you guys. Uh, be on the watch for more X1 tutorials as, uh, as the year goes along here. If you have any questions get in touch with me brian at obedia.com or on twitter at twitter.com forward slash Obedia Tutor, and uh, until next time, happy music making to you, and take care.